The room stank. There was smoke floating in the air, and it made the ambient lighting cast odd colors on the otherwise matte surfaces of the room. It wasn't enough that the beast in the room stank of bitter sweat and fear, but there was also the sharp smoke from the glowing ember of the brittle stick it was inhaling. Fucking disgusting. Ethel grimaced as she walked into the room. It was her part as Inquisitor to examine, categorize, and judge the lowers as they were found and assimilated. But it was never pleasant. It was the moist rankness, their stench, the sharp smell of biological odors that made it revolting every time. The more they were pressed, the worse they stank. That was her test, every time through all her endless years as judge, to understand and catalog, despite and because of her own emotions. The creature had the small, noxious stick between its pale fingers. It had short, messy hair on its head and two gray-blue eyes with jet-black irises that had an unsettling habit of focusing on her like strange old weapons the moment she walked in. The bruising, scratches, and mild bleeding from numerous smaller injuries did not seem to bother the semi-sentient, but only added to Ethel's revulsion of the creature. She could hear the moist, rattling breaths the creature was drawing in the rank air of the prison cells of the camp. Such was the burden placed on her kind by the broken circle of light. Ethel sat down in front of the beast, suppressing her disgust, and instead spreading her three arms in a kind gesture. As she spread open the ethereal pages of her assignment on the blank gray surface, she paid close attention to the two eyes of the lower form in front of her. It took a deep breath of the smoldering, acrid wrap as it tried to pierce the beauty of her folder, or maybe even her, with its eyes. It was odd to observe the almost dripping wet orbs as they changed their focus so fast. They were surrounded by two spare rims of hair that looked like they had never seen a moment of care during all their sad time of growth. She felt like there was something very, very old and something very new at the same time targeting and judging her. Out of all things, her. I see you have finally decided to come and engage, the creature opened up. Ethel could smell the gust of air that came out of the bloodied opening in its face. She hid her disgust and nodded as she had learned was the custom of these creatures. She had spent time and time after time studying what had been discovered and dissected of their kind, and was well prepared for the first contact with them, despite her personal opinion on their ilk. Our understanding is that you have managed to breach the limits of your local solar system. That places you under the just rediction of the culling of the void. We will decide if your will add to the light or be judged to demine. Fuck you, the animal interrupted her. But not with what she would interpret as hostility. Its words were at odds with the tone of the words and the expression. The lower seemed oddly not hostile or condescending, but something else that struck a nerve in her. The wet eyes were unsettlingly old and cold through the thickening veil of bitter smoke. She could make out the thin network of red veins from the pink corners to the broken patterns of the odd blue shapes encircling the void in the middle. His remark, however, felt like a small, cold worm at the bottom of her feet. With this, some of your kind have been chosen to be evaluated to provide an opening to the first chapter of our understanding. You will be judged to provide some baselines and then subsequently processed further to free up capacity for the next round. As she read the standard incantations, the creature let out a rasping cough that her implant interpreted as a laugh. She could see the few tiny droplets that flew out of its mouth as a result. How many would you need to evaluate in order to make an accurate judgment? It asked. The rank bitterness of its breath wafted all the way to her. It took a considerable amount of discipline to not react on her part, despite the revulsion roiling inside her. As many as I need to. In relation to this, tell me something, creature, she said as it suddenly smiled. She saw cracked, bleeding lips peel back from a line of lightly yellowed teeth that spoke of violence. This lower species was not kind by nature, she thought as she looked at the heavy taut form. Ask away, Inquisitor, it said, and the lips peeled even further back into a rictus grin as the corners of its eyes folded into an amused expression. She felt both affronted and unsettled by the way the last word of the sentence carried both hilarity and threat. It was as if that word carried a separate weight to the creature. 
The lips momentarily closed on the glowing stick as the bloodied and scraped knuckles raised it shakingly up. The unfortunate smile returned fast, now with more bitter smoke slowly floating up through those stained teeth. Why are you here? The small ember at the end of the pale stick shook for a second as shock was apparent on the brutish features of the creature. Ethel suddenly realized that it must be, by its own standards, old. Wear was visible in the many cracks and wrinkles of its face, and the color of the hair growing on it was that of bleached bone jutting out of browned-out ashes instead of any bright blonde, auburn, brown, or green common in other parts of her work. Life must not be kind where it came from, she thought as she looked at the short lifespan that had been determined by her equipment. It must be so old. Then it was her turn to be shocked as the creature let out a loud, wheezing bark of a laugh. The sound kept on climbing as it struggled for air, and she suddenly felt the cold worm of unease slither in from the void outside. The pitch of the laughter was not something that she was comfortable with. The tears running down the face of the old creature left tracks in the dust and blood that covered it. Slowly the near hysterical laughter subsided as the now teary, bloodshot eyes met hers. So I take it you think I am here against my will? Ethel tilted her perfect head as she stared. It was a standard question designed to irritate and provoke the nature of the lowers. This was not a reaction that she had expected. The cold worm from the void grew longer up her spine as the old bloodied creature from the monstrous world leaned closer. She could smell the bitter smoke, acrid sweat and harsh blood on it. Iron was all over this creature. More than that, she could feel the low radiation of heat from inside it. Instead of warming her, it made the growing worm in her spine only feel colder by contrast. She could only slowly gesture for her prisoner to continue as she had been taught to. He, in part, only grinned wider and she felt a hot needle of a desire to inflict violence in that ivory grin. I asked to be the one to meet and greet you, it said, and bitter smoke streamed out from between its teeth. I wanted to ask you some questions. Ask away, she waved her arm, and as she did so, she suddenly saw the edges of his knuckles fade away like severely thick smoke or a poorly pixelated image. A horrific thought spread its cold crystal tendrils at the edges of her mind. It is old. It is here. It is not here. What do you think is the reason I wanted to meet you? The amusement in its voice was dancing on the edges of her nerves. The cold worm of the void has made its way to the base of her neck and was spreading through her consciousness, despite her years of training. I really don't know, she heard herself say, almost against her will. Shrill alarms started to whistle at the edges of her hearing as the creature took another draft of the disgusting stick. There was a terrible feeling of being pierced by something ancient and primordial as the old, old eyes of this creature looked right through her. It was something that she could almost remember from her training, but not quite. I really, really wanted to see the insane, arrogant, stupid motherfucker who thought they had trapped me in here with them, the creature said with a rictus grin that was spreading far too wide, far too fast, and split the already bloodied lips across the pallid bone of the teeth. She could see the pixelation of the hands in the creature spread further as the station alarm started to blare in the terrible triple whoop of runaway nanomachine intrusion. She saw parts of the table vanish in dancing sparks and chittering gray tendrils as the terrifying eyes pierced her consciousness and nailed her into her seat, all her psychic defenses screaming and flaring against the existential threat they did not know how to counter. Just as the first fleck of the horrid gray mist touched her arm, she felt the enormous gut punch of recognition of the gaze. Those old, old eyes looked at her with hate, glee, and hunger. But at the very core of those black, devouring orbs was the relentless, overwhelming, uncaring, and dismissal of her being that only a death-worlder can encompass. It does not care 